Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we're gonna to be doing a couple of different things. I'm going to be sharing with you a unboxing of this thing that I'm super duper stoked about. And then we're gonna be making some sourdough uh, crackers. This particular box, I'm very pumped about. Uh, Kathy actually sent this to me. And it's a box full of fermentation starters, scobies, and the like. Super pumped about this. Okay, I just wanted to share it with you guys because I'm so freaking excited about this one. Kathy is like the sweetest for doing this. She sent me all of these, she emailed me, she gave me like all these pictures and everything of how, how these are doing for her and kind of stories of, whoa, whoa. This is an Island Girl Kombucha. It takes oolong tea, which I went to the store and got some oolong tea from the natural food store. So, I'm so excited. So oh my gosh. And this is a Jun tea starter. And I got some raw honey for it. We, I don't think we had raw honey. We just had normal honey. Um, like we had a bunch of old honey that we had. Um, it came with the, the house that we used to live in, <laughs> honestly. And so I, I went to the, I went to the national food store and, and uh, found this one ahead of time. So when I got the package, I would have be ready for it. So this is some Jun tea. It requires green tea and raw honey. And she included with it three cups of starter. So I'm so stoked. Uh, these gobies, I can't even get over it. These things are giant. These are amazing. Okay, this is a Tibetan scoby, and this is pu needs pu pure tea. I don't know how to pronounce that. Nobody's told me how to pronounce it, so my bad. Pure tea, and I did was not able to find that at the at the natural food store, but she said she did mail it with some. Let's see. Yes. Oh, she said oolong and Pierre tea. Oh, that's so sweet, thank you. So we got a bunch of tea here that we can make, uh, we can start a new batch here. Okay, and then she just sent me an entire cup of water keeper grains. Oh my gosh, I am so stoked. I have been wanting to order these for quite some time and I haven't been able to and uh, for a, a variety of different reasons, but I'm so excited that I finally actually get to start them. I'm so excited. So um, these teas here, I think we're gonna, she said that we should be able to open them up into a jar and just do a, do a SCOBY hotel type thing with those. Um, so we're gonna do those ones for today. And then, um, oh, I didn't even tell you sourdough starter. She also sent me, she said that, I think she said it was a 230 some odd year old sourdough. Like they can trace it back like 230 some odd years. Um, her, her parents or her grandparents purchased this from a sourdough bakery in, or from a bakery in San Francisco. I think she said back in the forties or something like that. And that strain can be traced back to like the early, early 19, 1800s, late 1700s, something like that. But anyway, she said it was 230 some odd years old. So how amazing is that? And it, perfect timing because our starters, while they're doing fine, there's certainly no 230 year old San Francisco bakery sourdough starter. So I'm pretty pumped about that one. So we're gonna actually get these two starters going in today's video. Uh, these other ones, we're, we're gonna transfer these guys into um, a SCOBY hotel type of situation. I'm not sure exactly what to do, but we're gonna look it up and we're gonna find out. So, and then of course, we're gonna be making some sourdough uh, crackers with our sourdough discard. So, I'll bring you right back. The first thing that we're gonna do is the kefir. And um, we're just gonna go ahead and put the whole cup in here. Uh, but first we gotta mix up our sugar water. So this is a gallon, gallon jug, so we're gonna go ahead and put a cup of water, or cup of water, we're gonna put a cup of sugar in here, get it completely dissolved. Absolutely not the slightest grain of sugar left in it. it over time, it can really, what is that thing focusing on? My face up here. It can totally, it can, over time, it can really start to damage the uh, kefir grains and make them much weaker if they're exposed directly to the grains of, um, or if they're exposed to the uh, sugar, sugar granules. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'm using organic 
um, Costco cane sugar. Um, you can use brown sugar. You could add molasses to it. Terrible, terrible, terrible sound. Okay. There. Plus a little bit. Probably more than a little bit, but it'll give them some energy, right? Energy, energy, energy. Okay. So now, let's get water. So I have well water, so there's no need to filter it. Um, if you have, if you have any kind of, um, I can't think right now. <laughs> if you have city water, you have ca carbon ca uh, chlorinated water, anything like that, fluoridated water, you want to filter it or get distilled water. Distilled water works great. Um, I don't have to filter mine. But I do because it has a tremendous amount of lime in it. It just makes everything all cloudy. Filtering, it seems to help. I don't know why. You can also use warm water for this part of the process. It would make it go a lot quicker. I didn't think about that. In my experience, a cup of grains should be plenty to ferment a whole gallon. I think it's like a tablespoon per quart. So like really we're kind of overkill on it, but not really. while we're waiting for the rest of the water to filter through, um, we are going to go ahead and do sourdough. You've seen me uh, do sourdough multiple times on doing this. Um, this one that I got in the mail is, it's pretty liquidy. It's like a thick milk. So um, we're just in a she wrote on here. This is SDS Sassy. So that must have been, her name must have been Sassy. So, um, and it was a hundred grams. It has been in here for four days. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this guy and re go, re -inoculated. She did tell me that it has been fed with uh, AP flour. So we're gonna go ahead, mix up a little paste here real quick, get it blended in. We're just gonna, it's a hundred grams. So we're gonna do hundred grams of flour, AP organic unbleached flour and 100 grams of water. Here it goes. 200 some odd year old sourdough starter. I'm nervous. I don't want to screw this up. I feel like I've been handed an heirloom and like the pressure is on, you know what I'm saying? Like, what if I'm the one that ends the life of this 230 year old sourdough starter? Like, you ever feel like that with stuff like this? Pressure. We need to find a rubber band for little Miss Sassy. We'll keep calling her Sassy until ours gets until it gets inoculated and it's active at our house. We're gonna see if this thing rises at all. I think I made it a little thin. It might not bubble up too much. I gotta wipe it off the edges here. Cause I found that if I don't wipe it off the edges. The paper towel sticks to it, and I think the fibers from the paper towel might mess with it when I'm pouring it out and stuff. It could just be my head. Extra level of caution. There we go. There we go. Sassy is ready to go for tomorrow. I keep my sourdough starters right now. They are in the living room right now, so I'm gonna keep it just a little ways away from my sourdough starters, but at least four feet. I have two bookshelves, so I'll keep them on either end of the bookshelves. We're gonna go ahead and hide these away. Oh yeah, it's fully, fully done. Oh, now we need to filter it even more. Why didn't I filter water before I started this process? Now you don't have to keep the lid on this, we just, with flies. There's no reason why we can't add our uh, kefir grains to this while we're waiting for the milk. Oh, these scissors, they kind of suck. This is the coolest thing ever. You guys have no, I'm like over the moon right now. Like, I think y'all know me well enough to know that fermenting cultures is like the way that you can be like, I don't know. It's just the, the best way to let you know someone you care is to give them your starter cultures. So, thank you. 
I miss water kefir so much. There we go. With this guy here, um, we're just gonna wait for the rest of the water to ferment. We're gonna we're gonna uh, fill it up. You know, we'll give it maybe two inch headspace or so. We're almost there, and then we're just gonna set it apart from any other ferments. Shucks, I'm gonna have to find another area. I got apple cider vinegar going over there. I have clabbered milk going there, sourdough in the living room. This might have to go in my room. <laughs> so this is actually gonna ferment for a, a couple of days to maybe three days since it's kind of recovering uh, culture. It's recovering from the being shipped in the mail. So um, with this guy here, I'll just bring you back in the next vlog that when we're ready to take the next step on this. So I do have a video. I'll try and remember to link it down below where I actually did restart kefir grains in a different way, but it's still the same principle. I use like brown sugar and stuff instead. After it gets shipped in the mail, it can take it can take a few tries of, or not a few tries, but a few changing of the liquids, a few, a few um, cycles, I don't know what you'd call it, a few batches of making it for it to be truly like re rehydrated, reactivated, um, and then can be used. And then you're gonna ferment it like every other day. That's kind of the, you can do every two to three days, then you're gonna change out the, change out the liquid and you're gonna do, turn it over to a second ferment, stuff like that. Usually about two to three days. So that's been my experience. Okay, so this particular spot here is safe, but it's not as long-term home because that's my counter. We're getting ready to make the sourdough crackers. We already have the oven preheating to 325 degrees. I have two tablespoons of butter warming up here in this pan. To that, we're gonna add in three quarters of a cup or 200 grams of sourdough discard, a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt, two teaspoons of dried herbs, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt to sprinkle on top. So we're gonna mix some salt in and we're gonna sprinkle some salt on top. So, let's get mixing. So the recipe actually calls for uh, herbs dip, herbs provolones, whatever. Um, but um, I looked it up and a semi substitute could kind of be um, <laughs> or Italian seasoning. So <laughs> we're gonna go with it. So we're just gonna mix this all up, dump it on our tray here. Spread it out with an offset spatula. Hi. Hello. So you're doing a video? I am, but I'm. All right, so we got them all spread out as thinly as we could on our sheet tray. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven for 10 minutes. We're gonna bring them out and we're gonna score them after 10 minutes. 10 minutes is up. So we are gonna cut this down a little bit. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna um, what do you call it? We're gonna score these crackers. So when they finish, they'll just break right apart. Back into the oven. It said for 20 to 25 minutes, but keep an eye on it because it can go pretty quickly. All right, so you can kind of tell uh, there's definitely, the ones on the outside are definitely done. The ones on the inside, need a little bit of more time. I did taste test them. They're not ready. So I think I'm just gonna flip all these over, pop them back in for a few more minutes. Back into the oven. So I think these ones are definitely done. They're delicious, depending on how long you cook them. They're crunchy. So I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with me as we reactivated a couple of starters and made some sourdough crackers. I uh, definitely enjoyed these. This is definitely something that I will be making again. I don't know if my husband would enjoy these. They do taste like very strong sourdough. You can make these with fresher sourdough. You don't have to use like the 24 hour plus uh, discard if you don't like this taste to be quite as sour as I do. You can also season these any way you want to. You could even sprinkle them with like cinnamon and sugar. Um, you could even you could even fill them with cinnamon and sugar. You could do that like instead of the um, instead of the herbs that we added to it, and that would give it. Uh, that would give it more of like a, a dessert type of feel. I'll probably end up doing that at some point through before the end of the month. And if I do, I'll bring you along for that. 
So if you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri, uh, bringing along and sharing with you all the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. Most of that's in the kitchen with canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting, as well as sharing with you videos on how you can use that food in your everyday cooking. If that sounds awesome to you, click this button right here. This is the subscribe button. This is what tells YouTube you wanna come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. If you got FOMO and you wanna know what we did yesterday, click this button right here. And if you wanna keep up with the, all of the sourdough recipes that we're working on for the rest of the month, make sure you click this button right here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.